Welcome back to another episode of FNM TV. FNM TV this week will present Suk vs. I believe Ian Shaw. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's Cobblade vs. Spencer Tapout. Round three, game one. Starting this off, nothing, nothing as you would hope would be in a game one. No, uh, no judges giving out game losses for God knows whatever. So we're going to flip in here into a game in progress because Souk's games do take usually longer than anyone else's. Pretty much it was draw, land, go, draw, land, go, draw, land, go until they both hit about five, six mana. So I figured I could skip ahead for you guys, save you guys some time. Nothing, nothing, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. As you both see that their graveyards are empty. So the first card played other than a land is going to be a squad hawk in this game. Shuffle in a cut. Put those uh, bad boys in your hand. And we'll see what uh, what he does here with those squad ox. Can't tell how many cards are in his hand, but we'll see. Four mana for an into the royal. He wants to make him discard. And Zook wants to draw a card. <laughs> so... I'm going to say it's a bad play, especially since you guys have been playing Drago, Drago, Drago. There might be a little bit of need to play a card to make sure that you feel like you're playing this game and let them know that you're in it. I think, yeah. I think the proper play is just to really let it resolve. It's not that big of an issue to discard a Hawk if you really have to, or a land for that matter, since you're already sitting on six and you're going to draw on others. So, Suk hits his six land. It's going to tap three, what it looks like, to set up a Blade Splicer, I would take. Or at least with his deck, I would assume it would be a Blade Splicer. Suk wants to make sure he taps the right mana. One, two, three. Yep. Leave that tag edge open. Oh, it's a Jace. Baby Jace. Nothing wrong with that. Solid play. I'm not entirely sure what Ian's going to do, but I think he lets it resolve since Suk is going for his dice. Jace is going to let Soup drop a card. Which is going to be kind of funny, seeing that not only did Big Jace get banned, but Baby Jace isn't even being reprinted in Corset 2012. This is going to be a new Jace format with no Jaces yet. No new Jaces. I mean, I really don't see Jace being an Innistrad, so I feel comfortable saying that. Um, from what I have seen, there's a new Planeswalker rail something or other. Uh, probably going to be like a red-blue Planeswalker. And we're going to get Liliana Vess, which will hopefully be, you know, like Liliana Mind Flare and uh, do the black versions of uh, Jace 2.0. Like, uh, oh, yeah, plus two Hemnotorak you. So, uh... <laughs> uh, all sorts of ridiculous. Um, you guys in the comment section for this video, this is what I'm going to do. Every video, if you haven't noticed going along there's going to be something i want you guys to post up in the comment section uh see what you guys what, what do you think the new liliana will end up doing in this uh in Estrad set coming up in october what will her abilities do and uh keep the flaming to a minimum for everybody try and make it try and make it real reasonable and believable so we have ian playing emiria angel dropping a land getting some uh, birdies to hit the board. And why not? Why not have more birdies hit the board? They're sword targets. They're amazing. It's one damage continuously over time. Plus whatever else you drop. No reason not to. Jace is going to make himself draw. I really don't like Baby Jace as a replacement for Big Jace in this uh, in this one coming up. So I'm gonna play Sun Titan, or at least that's what it looks like. Get back Tech Edge. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Now we can just Tech Edge stuff to just Tech Edge it constantly and keep them off mana. 
And if that's the case, well, Ian's not going to be in a very good position. Ian will play a fetch land, get a bird, crack, get another bird. Just birds galore, man. This is like birdemic. Just birds killing everybody. Hide your wife, hide your kids. Everybody getting raped in here. Everybody. It's like that new card, Flutterstorm from EDH. Because that's pretty much what he's putting on the board. Just lots of fluttery birds. If you guys didn't know about that whole EDH thing also, um, Flutterstorm's actually running about 20 bucks online. 20 bucks. Legacy, if it's good in Legacy, it just pumps that cost for that card up so much. Not to mention that, like, that deck is pretty decent by itself, but that one card, Flutterstorm, is now 20 bucks. I'm not sure what Spell Crumple is. Not being a rare, and then that could be decent, but... Oh, well. Phyrexia Metamorph copying Sun Titan. Which that will more than likely end up fetching probably another fetch land or uh, yep another fetch land get another bird and it's just birds galore right now so many birds so many birds so much deck thinning and you can see why Sook's matches end up taking so long control matches naturally usually naturally take a long time unless you're against aggro but control against control. These matches are drawn out. There's a lot of things you need to... You need to weigh. Playing this card now, saving cards for later. What's the best trade-off? How you can extend your life on a bad situation. Just to keep, uh... Just to keep you in the game. Because control against control, you're not going to be running burn spells. So, you get down to like three. You can you can still end up coming back to win that. Suka stabilized so many times at like two life, one life, four life in that area, especially with his deck and how uh how demanding it can be with board presence. But eh, it's what it is. It's control. It's a pain in the butt to edit these and try and get these down to below fifteen minutes for one game, but they are entertaining. Apparently you guys like them. So, we'll keep bringing them out to you. Although, this following week that comes up, I don't think he has a feature match. I think he got shafted by us. Sorry, buddy. But, uh, you will have a deck tech. You'll have our very first deck tech. Probably be you, then Mac McLaren. With his, uh, aggro-oriented artifact deck. Which I'm very impressed with, actually. So you go through his graveyard, seeing what he can possibly get out with Sun Titan. Force an attack, trade with a... Well, get blocked by a bird, or trade with the other Titan. Although I'd imagine Ian wouldn't want to trade with a Titan, since he's getting so much advantage just from the Titan getting back fetch lands. You can just constantly crack it, constantly get birds, trade one, gain two to three a turn, and just... Just fly over and eventually win. It's really what it seems like. Or he will trade and keep Suk off of advantage also. I think a person like Ian's position a little bit better to not trade there. But it's what it is. They're both playing a solid game so far. Ian getting back a lot of uh, lands to get birds. See what tap five mana what it looks like, probably a Vencer. Oh Gideon. And that's gonna eat a counter spell, and Suk will re-counter it with probably a spell pierce. Yup. So now Suk seems to be commanding board presence. I'm not sure what I'd do in his situation here. Gideon comes in with six counters, he has five birds plus Amiria. I think it assassinate, yeah, it seems like the proper play. I'm not sure what Suk would have to defend Gideon, but you really have to get that Amiria Angel off the board. 
Otherwise, things are just going to go from bad to worse, and that's five damage coming in. So, we'll see here. Gideon can be very problematic. Suke having six cards in hand. Suke, I think, has eight mana on board. Ian has six. Two mana, two blue, four, five, to animate Colonnade. So Ian wants to wipe those boards of Planeswalkers right now. So I think the distribution here is going to be a Gideon and Jace. They both die. He has one mana open, which is the colonnade he got to attack with with Vigilance. Suk will untap, see what shenanigans Suk has in store for this one. Six cards in hand, he should have something to get himself back in. And this is why these games are actually pretty entertaining. They, they're drawn out a little bit, but they're entertaining because they always go back and forth, back and forth. And Suk's going to clear the board with a Day of Judgment. And Ian can put his sideboard tokens <laughs> back in the sideboard. Suk will clear that out. Now he can start reloading the field. I'm not entirely sure with what he wants to do with it, but... Maybe a Blade Splicer seems pretty good in this situation. Or another Baby Jace, that's fine. Get more advantage, fill his hand back up again. Seeing force him to animate that colonnade if he wants to keep it off the board. Which is, uh, if I was Suk, I'd be more than happy to have someone just constantly go into colonnades and just start swinging at planeswalkers. Yep, and that's what he's gonna do. You keep him off putting actual board presence on, however his hand does get bigger. Seeing as Ian also didn't drop a land that turn, Ian I believe is also sitting on Jace, which is at the front. Suk will tap. Four, five, six. For another Sun Titan. Getting back a Jace Balaren. Yep, why not? Draw into the card. Spell Pierce cannot do anything about that Sun Titan. So, right now, Colonnade really doesn't do you very much good. So you need to start putting some board presence out to be able to deal with what Suk has. Jace isn't really a big deal right now. It's a big deal when you're playing from behind. But Ian technically really isn't playing from behind right now. They're playing pretty even footing, regardless of the fact that Suk has two on board. So three mana to bring out sort of War and Peace. I'm a tad confused, but... Ian usually has something, something planned. So, Squad Hawks out and gets leaked. Yeah, because the sword doesn't really matter. So, Suk made a correct play there. Let the sword resolve because it doesn't do anything offhand. He doesn't have enough mana to equip it to his colonnade. If he does animate the colonnade, he needs two more mana. Tech Edge that colonnade, so that's not even a possibility anymore. Baby Jace will draw him a card. Play a Glacial Fortress. Oh, these uh, going back and forth, it really depends who draws what, but uh, those Sun Titans are doing all kinds of work right now. If I was, yeah, there you go take out the blue-white source. There's no other tech edges. Gonna vent her, and then here comes the Planeswalker control completely. Blink the Sun Titan. End of turn, comes back in, get back tech edge, tech edge, tech edge. Yep, and then that's just it's brutal. It's brutal. Reuse of tech edge constantly with that Sun Titan. 
And Suke will end up taking this, and that's it.